Azerbaijan and to its capital city, Baku. Situated on the Caspian Sea, Baku is emerging as one of the leading cities for entertainment and sport, as it invests in world-class venues and facilities. The sport of judo has been frequenting Baku annually since 2011. Judo is huge in Azerbaijan. The International Judo Federation's World Tour has given the country's fans the opportunity to see the sport's global stars in action, alongside professional heroes. The Sahachi Sport Olympic Center made host venue to the judo. The draw on the eve of the competition was tinged with anticipation as 2016 Olympic qualification pops up. IJF and Sport Accord President Mr. Marius Visa officially opened the Baku Grand Slam. Once again, a host of world and Olympic champions were here and meant business. Their first priority is the 2015 World Championships this summer in Astana. And with the strongest fighters Azerbaijan has to offer, determined to put on a good show, there was a recipe for fireworks. We start at under 70 kilograms, where world number one is Polling of the Netherlands. Polling was one of the outstanding judoka in 2014. She looked indestructible, blasting her way to multiple gold medals with some beautiful judo. Heading to last year's world championships, Polling was the favourite. But lying in wait was double world champion Alvia, who threw her for Ippon and ended her hopes of world glory. Polling was out to make a statement in Baku. It was her first competition of 2015. It started with a drop and Agi against Spain's Bernabal. Next up was Israel's Boulder. This time it was an Ochigari from Polling that was the decisive technique. In her semi-final, Polling showed how physically strong she is as she lifted and launched Francis Gahey to the map to score Ippon. It booked her a place in the final. Up against her was the fighter she beat this time last year in the Baku final, Great Britain's Conway. Conway's form has been good in 2015, winning bronze in Samson and silver last week in Zagreb. She's particularly strong in groundwork, and once again she put on a Nawaza masterclass in the Baku eliminations, arm-locking both Blair of the USA and Germany's Dietrich. How much of a threat could Conway pose to the world number one? So Polly pushing forwards all the time, but so's Conway. Conway very, very determined. Well, Polly can throw from any direction. She can counter-attack. But uh, look at that, pushing forwards, and she's been taken over. And that's a Yuko scored there to Polling, but this is where Conway is dangerous, straight onto the arm. And Polling did this the whole final last year. She was defending the arm and, well, almost got oh, arm on continuously oh, throughout the contest. And now that's the score. She attacked with Ouchi Gary, and it wasn't a strong push off the back leg and got countered onto her side by Polling. So now Polly is ahead. Conway wants her on the ground, that's for sure. But also she wants her grip. She's fighting for the grip all the time, looking for the Ouchi all the time. She's got to be careful of that. Almost goes for the Uranagi. And Polling scored so many times with that in 2014. The coach is saying you've got to go forwards, nothing to lose at all. Koji Ouchi, got to be careful of the counter. And Polling this time having a go at the strangle. There's the Koji Ouchi, that's what she got caught with, that was the score. Conway now, 20 seconds to go, and she's pushing forwards, not giving up. Now what's gonna happen? She's, oh, Ouchi Gary, she's taken her backwards, and she's thrown Polling, the world number one for Ippon. In the last 20 seconds, in fact, 10 seconds on the clock, and that was magnificent. It really was. Talk about determination. She accepts it, of Polling. She agrees that that was something else because she never gave up. Conway pushes with the Ouchi Gary. She drives off that back leg, and Polling 
goes flat on her back. Talk about action reaction. Look how she pulls first, Conway, and then she drives off that back leg. It was brilliant stuff. There's the reaction. There's the Ouchi. And, well, Polly has got some work to do before the World Championships. She still has some rough edges, Polly, but she'll have to do a couple more competitions, I think, before the Worlds. But, wow, Sally Conway, I think, has made herself a contender for a medal at the World Championships. So I just thought, get close to um, Kim, engage, um, make a reaction. She dug her heels in as if I was going to do my Koichi. Um, but as it happened, I went for the Ouchi. Um, I kind of forgot what an Ippon was <laughs> at the end. I was just so surprised, like, just so happy to have managed to get it in the last 10 seconds. To be in the top eight in the world is amazing, and because every tournament then you're ranked and you're seeded, so it gives you a little head start at the beginning of the day. Um, this may put me up to the highest I've ever been. I'm not too sure yet, but I'm really, really pleased. At under 78 kilograms, there would be gold for the Netherlands as Steenhuis won her first gold on the IJF World Tour. Her final was against two-time world medalist Ogata of Japan. Ogata started strongly, throwing Steenhuis with Osodogari and out to reaping technique to score Yuko and take the lead. But the Dutch judoka responded strongly throwing Ogata with a winding Haram Makikoni to score a Wazari and give her a maiden victory to celebrate. Steenhuis moves into the world's top ten for the first time. And there was more Dutch interest at under 90 kilograms, as world number four Vanta End was looking to improve on his Baku silver medal from last year. He started by throwing former world medalist Choriot with Tomanagi, for producing a sublime Sony Surakami Goshi against Jurek. In the semi-final, it was his trademark Koichi Gary that saw him beat Dvabi and reach the final. There, he would be facing Baker of Japan. Having thrown Russia's Kalmazea with an unusual variation of Sienagi, Baker then produced a more traditional Kosoda Gary against Vicente in the semi-final to put him into the final. It was the first time that these two had met in competition, and before the final, both were trying to suss the other out as the tension built. But the final didn't quite produce the expected fireworks, with Baker scoring an early Yuko with Ochi Gary, an inner reaping technique holding on for victory that moved him up to world number eight. Have Japan now found their challenger at under 90 kilograms? Down one way to under 81 kilograms, it was Russia's Kalmazeyev, who took gold after his opponent was unable to compete in the final. It was his first Grand Slam victory and moved him up to world number seven. At under 52 kilograms, the world number one is Kosovo's Kalmendi. In 2013, she became world champion for the first time when she beat Brazil's Miranda in the final in Rio de Janeiro. Then last year, she claimed a second world title in Celia Bins, beating Romania's Kitsu and sealing her position as the highest ranked judoka in any weight category. And in Kalamendi's absence, it was her two closest challengers, the two world silver medalists, Hitsu and Miranda, who faced off in the final year. These two battling it out for the number two spot. Kilmendi, clearly the number one. Hitsu, nice attack there, and drops in Aggie there from Miranda. 2-2 two -two between these two. They've met four times before. Finals of World Championships both times, and they've won one of those each as well. Kitsu on great form. Miranda on great form. Miranda dangerous on the ground, and Kitsu wants to get out of there because really going for the arm now. Can she latch onto it? She needs to go into the elbow. Mate. And a 
lot of calls there from Miranda and Kitsu from the coaches saying you've got to go forwards because the winner of this will go number two in the world rankings. And look at that! Shimmy Water on! that Miranda's transition into Newaza was superb. Just whipped the jacket around the neck and just threw those hips forwards. And that was brilliant transition, it really was. Kitsu couldn't do anything about it and the look on Miranda's face there said, I am the number two and I am definitely chasing for the number one spot. So watch out Kilmendi at the World Championships because this lady here, and well, both of them are going for it. Brilliant transition, and that there put pay to the number two slot. Ah, durante a, a luta são feitas de momentos. It was a difficult fight. E she é uma luta difícil, opponent. é uma adversária dura, então você tem que aproveitar todos os momentos. I had mine. I e eu tive um momento muito feliz, que foi o estrangulamento, que foi pom, medalha de ouro. Ah. I'm thinking step by step. Ah, eu tô pensando um passo de cada vez. Hoje foi um grande slam. Minha próxima competição é o Pan-Americano, depois o Mundial. Eu acho que é uma vitória todos os dias para ter uma vitória maior nas Olimpíadas. The under 48 kilo final, there was another Romanian in action, Andriana. She was up against world bronze medalist Cernovitsky. With nothing to separate the two, the contest went to golden score, where Andrianu struck, countering Cernovitsky for Wazari, claiming the gold medal and moving to world number seven. Romania had their third finalist at under 57 kilograms, where Olympic silver medalist Capriorio took on Great Britain's Smith Davis. Could Capriorio get another goal for Romania? Capriorio so determined with the grips, but Smith Davis looking to get that arm on, but having her sleeves dominated now. This is where Stengrass, oh, massive hit throw there, and that isn't a score. No score given. She's on to the arm. She gets the submission. And Smith well, Davis of Great Britain, well, didn't stand a chance. Capriorio really back to form. She was after revenge from Zagreb one week ago, where she lost to Smith Davis. Smith Davis lets her get the hips across. And look at that arm there. She's got the sleeve. And she comes up. She notices that she's got control of that arm. She comes up onto the arm, keeps it straight falls back on it and just puts on the arm lock to get the submission <laughs> and look at the lock on her face. That set it all. Capriorio back to world number four and in with a chance at the Worlds. Spune că m-au mobilizat și fetele, mai ales pentru că s-au obținut prima medalie de aur la 48 de kg. Pe urmă, Andreea, cu toate că a pierdut finala, a obținut o medalie și da, pot să spun că m-au mobilizat fetele și mai ales auzând imnul, cântându-i Monica. Up one way to under 63 kg. And it was the world number five, Austria's Antwazak, who was the outstanding performer. After beating Japan's Sakani for Ippon, she made it two from two against Brazil's Quadros. Then a counter-attack against Britain's Schlesinger in the semi-final. In the final, she overcame Germany's Tridos, the world number nine, with a quite stunning piece of Ashiwaza. Gold medal IGF ranking points for Antwazacha on the brink of the world's top four. The over 78 kilogram final was a David and Goliath matchup, as Lithuania's Pakiniti towered over Ukraine's Yeromka. But as Judo quite often proves, size doesn't always matter. Yeromka chased her opponent into groundwork, kicked out her legs, and secured an Ippon scoring hold down. It moved her inside the world's top 10. At the heaviest male weight of over 100 kilograms, the final was between Hungary's Boar and Maya of the Netherlands. After a tough five minutes and with no score separating the pair, the fight went into golden score. The 
crucial moment came only 30 seconds in, as Meyer attacked and Bohr countered, directing the Dutchman onto his side for a Yuko, taking home the gold medal. Down to the lightest male weight of under 60 kilograms, and Kazakhstan Zibreyev was lighting up the category with a throwing masterclass. First up was one-handed Ushimata against Switzerland's Char Martin. Ibrayev gymnastically using his head and loose hand to direct his opponent onto his back. It was Uchimata again in his next contest against Kaiser of Austria, but this time with single-sided Makikomi grip. In the quarter-final, he expertly countered Safarov's reverse Sienaki, spinning the Azerbaijani onto his side. In the semi-final, it was another counter-attack, this time against Germany's Engelmeyer. Zari for the throw and Anippon for the pin secured his place in the final. There he executed a 360 degree spin to land Francis Lemaire onto his back for a Wazari. That was enough to secure him the under 60 kilogram title. Azerbaijan's latest star to burst onto the world judo stage competes at under 73 kilograms. After gold medals in both Samson and Tbilisi, Orozhov completed a hat-trick of titles in 2015, as he delighted his Baku fans with trademark big hit -hops. His first victim was Kosovo Djokova. Next up came a huge bear hug Kosa Gary as he buried Francis Urinev. That was followed by an instinctive version of the technique against Russia's Ozdoev, which was somehow even more spectacular than the last. In his semi-final, Orozhov wasted little time putting away Ungvari for Ipok, as he threw and held the Hungarian to progress to the final. Orozhov's last obstacle was Mongolia's Sanjago. Orozhov was unable to land the killer blow. Did manage to outgrip and out attack Sinjar. Victory was decided by penalties. Orozhov was Grand Slam champion in Baku and moved from number five to number two in the IJF World Rankings. Favourite at under 100 kilograms was Azerbaijan's world number two and the top seed, Gazimov. He would be disappointed with anything other than gold. After a fast start against USA's Tadahara, Gazimov produced an excellent Tatagaruma on Israel's culture. But his best moment came in the semi-final. Losing via Wazari with just 15 seconds to go, Gazimov struck. Portugal's front second went over for Ipon. Gazimov was into the final. But there would be no fairy tale finish to his day, as his opponent in the final, Russia's Bazultanov, crushed everything Gazimov threw at him. In the end, one score, a Yuko, decided the final. And to the dismay of the home crowd, Bazultanov walked away with the gold medal. And finally, to under 66 kilograms, where Azerbaijan's Shikalazada was looking to take his first title in Baku after four previous unsuccessful attempts, including a bronze and silver medal. Shikalazada showed nerves were not affecting him as he started in emphatic fashion, dropping underneath Yesim Betov of Kazakhstan for Ipom. A massive Uranagi Kosoto variation in his next contest was one of the throws of the tournament as he buried the hill of Korea. Sheikh Alizada then put away George's Mark Vellish Philly with a driving Kataguruma. In the semi final, Sheikh Alizada cleverly rode his opponent's attack, turning Jerem. Slovenia onto his back, pinning for him. He was into the final. There he would face Britain's Colin Oates, the defending champion from last year. Oates had once again been on great form in Baku, 
He is strong in both groundwork and standing. In his first fight, he tied up a jacket that rushes our gun off before trying to get his leg free. Once he had done that, he was in control of Adano. Pinned him easy on the hip hop. But his best moment came in the quarter final, as he destroyed the informed smile of Israel. El Gary for him. Could Oates make it two successful years in a row in Baku? Or would Sheik Alasada finally take his first ever gold medal in front of his home crowd? Colin Oates, the winner from last year, Sheik Alasada going for gold in front of his home crowd. And he's been dynamic today. Colin Oates, well, very, very tactical. A nice seeing Aggie there from Sheik Alasada. Look at the crowd, loving it. Mr. Marius Visa, the president of the IGA, loving it. And a second penalty to Oates. Sheik Alasada gets one as well. So that means Oates has got to come forwards. Such a big throw as Sheik Alasada. Got the sleeve. And he can come from every angle. Nice Samagashi there from Oates. When he's in danger, he attacks. David LaRose there of France looking on. Interested for the outcome, I'm sure. Left to left, these two. That leads the leg forward. Oh, he was round that leg so quick there, Sheik Alasada. Not quite the right angle, though. Tries to kill the sleeve of Oates. Oh, he changed the uh, direction then. Right, Sonny Sora coming across, and look how he changes. And that's what's going to catch either one of them going over to the other flank. Colin Oates, well, look, looks at the board just to see if it was a score. No score given. Still anybody's into the last minute. Oh, he's got over the top. Colin Oates has gone over. And that was a superb score there. Even Common Oak says that was classical because it was Kosoto into Ogaruma. It was beautiful technique, it really was classical. And that was amazing. And he wins his first ever Grand Slam in front of his home crowd here in Baku. Have a look at that. Kosoto immediately over to the Ogaruma and straight over the top goes Colin Oates. Kosoto, action, reaction, and talk about opposite flanks. You've got a great example of it there. Hits the front leg, gets it to go back, and that just sets it up perfectly for the Okaruma. Shik Elizada has given the Azerbaijan crowd what they want. He's given them a massive impost. The Haida Ali of Baku Grand Slam is a very special tournament for me. I'm really happy to win this competition and to receive the congratulations of all the fans. In a tournament like this, at home, our fans support us and push us on. Not just for me, but for all judoka from Azerbaijan. Finally, I was able to win this title. I don't have any words to express how I feel. I only have emotions. The preparation for this Grand Slam was hard. And of course, it was great that I won the final by Once again, the Baku Grand Slam has produced fireworks. Conway stunned Polly in the dying seconds. Is Miranda now the biggest threat to Kel Mendy? How far can Capriorio go? Shik Alazada finally took the title that he and Azerbaijan so badly wanted.